Well, good afternoon, good evening, and good morning, wherever you may be that you are tuning in and listening to Tea Time with Miss Liz. That's right, it's Tea Time, and I have an incredible guest here today. But before we get started, the routine, the disclaimer, and then the incredible bio, and then we bring the guest in, and we just spill good tea. Tea of goodness, tea of healing, tea of self-growth. We send a special message with the TEA, and you will learn what my guest is tea is today as she shares it. Before we start, the disclaimer for Miss Liz's Tea Times live shows. I myself, Miss Liz, is going live using StreamYard. Before having a comment, please give StreamYard the permission to see your name at StreamYard.com. Please be advised that the content brought forward at any Tea Time show hosted by myself, Miss Liz, is always brought forward in good faith. However, it may bring forward dialogue and opinions that are not resident representative of my platform. The facts and information are perceived to be accurate at the given time of airing. All Tea Time guests and audience participations are responsible for using their good judgment in taking any action that may relate to the discussion. The content brought forward may include discussions for somewhat, somewhere they may be emotionally at risk. It is significant to know that this show is engaging in discussion forms only to offer and inspire awareness and connection, and, and it is not a pro- providing therapeutical advice. If you have any questions about the disclaimer or the panelist discussion, you may freely contact me, Miss Liz, through my email at bookingmissliz at gmail.com. Moving forward, should you choose to voluntarily participate in the show in any aspect, I, myself, Miss Liz, welcomes you. And should you decide that the show is not for you at this time, I respect that. And I will see you in a future show in the, at a later date. Now, I'm going to introduce my guest, but I'm going to pop her on the screen so you can see who I'm introducing to you. She's an incredible, incredible lady. I've been watching her journey. And she has transformed since the time I first started talking to her. So I'm going to pop up Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> So a, so a little bit on Catherine, and then Catherine, I'm going to let you take over and spill the tea with the viewers and listeners Ooh, out there. Yes. You want my TEA right now? Is that where you're at? Uh, no, I will get into that when, well, when the energy comes to me and says, <laughs> oh, okay, now it's time to get her tea. So a little bit on Catherine. Catherine is 49 and a single mom of four. She is in the midst of a radical transformation, and it is radical. It is truly transformational. And feels called to share her story of healing. She is healing her body, mind, and soul. She is pushing her boundaries and finding all herself. She loves to share the wisdom she has found within herself as she finds her own path to healing and loving Catherine. So Catherine, welcome to the show. Mm -hmm. I want you to share your journey and where it all began. From the beginning to the middle to the end. And to where you are now. (sighs) Because... The freedom to tell my story. Oh, my God. I'm so excited to do this. Well, I started as a missionary's daughter. My dad was a missionary in Newfoundland. And I rejected all his teachings as a young person. And not connected to anything, I became very sick. Um, I then went to the doctors and said, doctors, what's wrong here? Why am I feeling well? And the doctors listening to me and wanting to find something wrong with me found a bunch of things wrong with me, right? They found fibromyalgia and interstitial cystitis and endometriosis and polyarthritis and then put me on all the medications that those conditions required. And so I took them thinking I was going to get better because that's what the doctors told me was going to happen. About a 
Oh, probably five or six years ago, I was about 100 pounds heavier than you, than you see before you right now. And I lived every day as my sickness is. Um, at my worst, I only went to the grocery store. Oh, wow. That was all that I could manage weekly. Um, and that would exhaust me <clears throat> for the rest of the week. And I would be just pain. Um, and I lived like that for almost a decade. In bed. And slowly losing my memory and my mind and my body uh, to the medications that were supposed to be making me better. And then I had a magical friend named Brenton Wanhala ask me a simple question. He was the first enlightened being that I ever met. His mind amazed me. And he asked me one question. He said, Catherine, why are you on all those drugs? What, what are they doing for you? And how are they helping you? And at first I was like really defensive. I was like, what the heck? What the fuck? Am I allowed to swear on here? And I started. <laughs> you know, we, we, we all have those moments where, you know, we have that. Okay, I'll try to keep my language to a minimum. <laughs> but it's the occasional F-bomb is going to just come out of my mouth. I said, well, what do you mean? Of course they're helping me. And look at me now. And I'll be way worse without them. And how dare you ask me about my drugs? These are my drugs. Don't you dare ask me about those. Right? That was my immediate reaction. And then I actually, he was like, oh, cool. He didn't get mad at me. He just loved me. And I, it was so much magic because his mind was open. I'd never met an open mind before. And that question started a journey of going, wait a second, what does this one do for me? Why am I in a muscle relaxant? And why am I on two antidepressants? And why am I taking anti-seizure medication? And why am I taking sleeping pills? And maybe I can like learn to sleep on my own. So I got off those first. The doctors the whole time were like, why? What do you mean? Don't get off these. These are good for you. <laughs> I was like, but I don't want, I want to try this. I want to, I want to see if they're actually helping me. So I got off the sleeping pills and I was able to sleep. And I got off the antidepressants and I was able to find my own happy. And I got, and then I started losing weight. And I was down to one medication. It's generic form of pregabalin. I don't think I can say it's, um, its actual name. Um, they don't like you doing that. Um, and that one, uh, wow, this is hard. That one, I went down the way the doctors told me and I woke up the next morning after a, doing a two lowers and I couldn't remember who I was. I didn't know where I, where I was. I, I just knew that suddenly I didn't know who I'd been for the last decade because it had gotten to the point where I am. Um, you would ask me, you know, I, I couldn't remember words. Like, I'd be like, you know that thing that you tie boats up to in the water? What's that called? Oh, the anchor. Yeah, well, yeah. And I, But that's what I would ask, the dock, right? I was, I, my brain was so slow from the drugs that I couldn't think. Oh, let me organize my thoughts. I've got myself all excited. Oh, that's okay. Take your time. Uh, it's so good to take our time. Thank you for that gift of time, sister. Thank you for that. <sighs> So getting off that last drug, I lost my mind. I, I had homicidal and suicidal thoughts. I lost my short-term memory. Um, I would ask you the same question three times in one sentence, in one conversation, and not remember it. And I couldn't sleep for more than two hours a night getting off that last one. But it did something magical for me. Because the side effect of that medication is it stops your brain from forming synapses. Oh, wow. So think of it this way. When you have Alzheimer's, your brain, your synapses stop firing. Mm -hmm. Right? So you can't access those memories. My brain didn't form any new ones for almost a decade. Oh. Yes. So for ma for a decade, my gradually my brain went to sleep. Wow. And when I started going off the drug, my brain suddenly woke up. Kind of like when your leg goes to sleep and you step on it and you got all those pins and needles. My brain suddenly woke up. And I consciously 
had to decide who I was because I didn't remember anymore. Wow. The only way I was able to form new neural pathways in my brain with no resistance to self, because I was able to say that was drugs, Catherine, I'm not them anymore. And I need to be someone new because I'm no longer drugged to Kathy. Yeah. Well, it, it, it really is a transformation right? coming off of off of medication. Wow. So, yeah, so I, I, as we shared in the back, mm. we've been talking quite a bit lately and and we both have gone through this journey of coming off of medication, right? And finding our true selves in that. Mm. And that's why your story is so important, Catherine, because we're not saying for, it works for everyone, but it worked mm -hmm. for us, you There's know. There's no place for your own body and your own mental health. You yeah. get to own your own health. That's 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 part of having a body. We're all given one. It's a yeah. present of birth. But boom, you've got a body. <laughs> <laughs> Ta-da! There's <laughs> a body. It's your job. It's the soul inside it. It's your body. Yeah. Look after it. It's up to you. You get to decide how you treat it, what you, medicines you choose to use. And this is all your lessons of love. Yeah. We love owning our own bodies and having those choices. So what have you learned about yourself, Catherine, since you've gotten off of the medication? Well, fuck. Um, well, when I started loving my body, I realized that I hadn't been loving my mind or my emotional self. Okay. And I used to have this huge war going on in my head. My mind believed that there was no such thing as magic. That the wow. world was real, that it was exactly as I thought, and it's not only logical. And then I had my emotional self, which I believe is my soul. And they actually believed they were a magical creature. So I had two sides of me constantly screaming at each other. And I thought, because the doctors tell you, if you have voices in your head, that means you're insane. And these extra thoughts that I didn't think were actually me, I was ignoring them because, God, holy crazy people talk to the voices in their head. Right. Yeah. So um, we had a discussion. Once I realized that these two voices were actually also me and they were just warring thoughts and beliefs inside of myself, we came to an agreement. I said, hello, selves. And I didn't even know who or what they were at the point. I just knew there were two voices in my head. I said, this is what we're going to do. We are going to believe that both things are possible. That either magic is real or the physical is all that's real. But we're going to believe that anything is possible and we're going to open be open to all the options. So stop warring, please. I would like to think clearly now without two voices <laughs> in my head. Screaming at me. <laughs> but I think if we really open our minds in that, right, we all have those voices, you know, it doesn't we mean all do. crazy. We all it means, of thoughts. Yes. you know, we all have that devil and that angel on our shoulder, yes. you know, that says, do it, don't do it. You know, the good, the bad. Yes. The life side, the things that, you know, the naughty child, my inner child, like that was the first part of my healing, was bringing out my inner child to play, right? And a man named Donnie uh, over the phone helped me heal and get rid of my guilt, and it came out of me, and like a black goo, I could feel it, and then I could start healing, right? I had yeah. to heal my emotional self. Yeah. So we came to an agreement that we would make a decision when one of these two things happened. When the side of me that believed in magic was convinced that there was no magic and there was only real, then we would all believe that magic was not real. But if the logical mind was fully convinced that magic was real, then we would believe in magic and there would be no wars left in our head. And I've almost reached the conclusion with my logical brain that magic is real. I'm almost there. Magic is real. I think we've, I think we're programmed and 
told by society, right? That we can no longer play. We can no longer have imagination. You know, yeah. as a child, they tell us, imagine that you can be a doctor, you can be a lawyer, mm -hmm. you can be, uh, you, you know, a teacher. You you can be anything you want to be as a child. But as you become an adult, no, you're not no longer allowed to play. You're no longer allowed to have the magic in you. It's almost like you have to transform into this cold slate of wood that doesn't move, yeah. you know? Yeah. Duck in the adult mode of the Matrix game we were playing. Yeah. This is Earth School Matrix Level 2020, right? Yeah. All our senses are within 2020. We even had a pandemic that started in 2020. This is the school 2020 model. That's where we are. Right? Yeah. That's how I see it anyway. I don't know. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you have a supporter here because I feel the same way. I feel that the, the, yeah. the innocence of magic has been removed from mm -hmm. us. Yes. And we, we need the magic back. We need the kindness back, mm -hmm. the loving back, you know, the positive. See, I used to do a lot of unintentional magic, right? Yeah. Radios would turn themselves on around me and the song I was thinking about would start playing. But I thought that happened to everyone. Or like the TV would turn itself on. Or, you know, oh, one time I was dating this guy and I got really mad at him. And at the exact time that I got mad at him, Everything in his car turned on. All the neighbors got woken up and there was a huge bang. And then his car was dead and he had to get it fixed. Wow. He, he told me I did that, but I thought he was full of crap. There's no way I could do that. I've also accidentally healed people physically before. I felt a power come through me and into them. And I healed them. But I didn't think it was me. I thought it was something outside of me or... It wasn't real. It was just, I don't know. I just didn't think about it. I kind of put it behind there and didn't think. Well, before the show started, we talked about the open mind, right? Uh, you know, we, we really need to have an open mind in order to change, in order to heal, in order to support and grow with one another. You know, if your mind is closed, how can you help anyone? How can you see the difference? You have to be able to see yourself honestly in order to heal yourself. Yeah. Right. I have friends all the time. I, I know people, they lie to themselves about their own bodies. Right. Yep. They, they're they're having to go to the bathroom to pee once on the hour, but they don't think anything's wrong. So you have to have, have an open up mind to heal yourself physically yep. to see your truth. Because truth, truth always hurts a little. Right. Truth is always a little painful. And we go, ouch. And then we close our eyes <laughs> off and go, no, don't hurt me, Ruth. Ruth, I hate the way it is. It can't be this way. What is the truth? Right? Yeah. yeah. But we need the truth. And the truth does hurt, right? And, and you know what? Me. Sometimes we have to have that little hurt in order to grow. We always have to have the truth. That is yeah. a, listen, you cannot be an open mind without saying, listen, I love being wrong. Right. I yeah. love having the wrong opinion so that I can find the right one. Right? Right. Yeah. Because yeah. the truth is all that matters. Because otherwise it's a fantasy or a fairy tale. It's the not truth that actually hurts us, not the truth. It's that we've put faith in the not truth. And we put ourselves in the not true position. Right? Mm -hmm. You put the not true button on and inside you. And then you get stuck there. And yep. when getting that button switched hurts every time, the truth, and you're like, no! <laughs> Go away! <laughs> oh, you're bringing out my little one. I call her little mm -hmm. Cassie. You're but we need to bring those little ones out. Yes, yes, because that's where the magic is. Yeah. Because we're born into this life, we remember all the lives, right? And and then as we lose, you you learn language. Well, lose the language, really, the language of love, as we learn to speak words. Yep. And our parents say us, no, you can't see those colors around stuff. And no, that's not you moving that ball. Wink, wink, right? <laughs> 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 right? We, we forget that we're magic and, and then we get put in school with all these facts to remember. And then we can't think at all because we're having to remember facts that don't even matter. Who cares what happened <laughs> in 1867? I really don't care. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, and yeah. then as adults, we get to go back once we access the adult mode and learn to be responsible and disciplined and have jobs and do what we're supposed to do, I guess. That's what we think. Yeah. We get back, we can be the wise to move. I skipped through parking lots. I danced naked on the beach with all my friends who were also naked, right? 
I do love magic on pack so that I can feel people's love, right? I am my inner child, but I am also an adult. So my latest lesson of love is self-discipline. The last two days have been me learning how to discipline myself because I, I rejected the teachings of my mother and father. So I never disciplined myself. So when you say self-discipline, Catherine, what are you trying to tell me? Well, there's a balance between controlling yourself and disciplining yourself. So giving in your moments of now, you're giving your future self, my future Catherine, I talk to them all the time. Yeah. You give them a gift and you say, okay. okay, I'm going to clean this room. So tomorrow when I wake up, I'll have a clean room and I'll feel really good in that moment. And I'm going to do it in a way that will help me feel good. And I'm going to cook myself a real meal tonight so that my body can be my temple that it is and I can feed my soul. With... That's discipline to me. Control is, is when we're afraid of the future, right? And we're, we're trying to control, all, looking for all the bad that might happen. And we're like, oh, crap, crap, crap. That's what people <laughs> are <doing, right? laughs> trying to control it, right? But to, to plan for it and discipline, that's, that's what I see. That's the word I've come up for myself. Everyone has their own moods, I think. Yeah. Well, and that's what we were talking about before the show started, right? Was that's why we're all incredibly unique because we all have something that no one else has, and okay. that's us. You and know? we need to have our own love, right? We yeah. need to have our own love. How yeah. beautiful are we? Oh, yeah. we're so beautiful. We we absolutely need that. We need to actually open up the doors and actually spill who we are, right? So I'm going to come to your tea because I think right now I'm feeling that I need to hear this tea. And I think the tea is going to actually spill us into the gonna next. going to bring out some more of my crazy. I love some more crazy. More crazy Catherine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Something's telling me it's time for you to spill your tea. So what is your tea, Catherine? My tea is tits. Ecstasy and action. Wow. Yes, yes, that yes. That is Catherine. And yes. why, the, why those words and why that tea, Catherine? Well, I'd like to explain my tits first, if that's okay, because they're right up in front and they're always yeah. first, my tits. Yes. I um, spent most of my life not even going naked in women's dressing rooms because I was ashamed of my body. That's what my daddy told me as a missionary. We covered ourselves and it was respectful. This was private self. Public self didn't include body parts of Catherine, right? Um, and when I got off, we getting off the drugs and my mind got opened, I decided I wanted to expand my boundaries of self and face my fears. So what I did is I found some guy named Sean Power on Facebook, and I said, can I come be naked with you? I heard you run a swim once a month at a pool named Needham in Halifax, and I want to be come naked with you. I've never been naked in front of people before, except for, you know, my lover and my kids. That was it. No one else saw the conference. And uh, so I went there with a friend named Great Junkie. That's his real name, but he chose it. He named himself Great Junkie. And uh, I walked out in the towel. And I stood in front of all these people I didn't know, and I dropped it. And the rush of childlike glee that flowed out of me spread across, and my magic woke everyone up, and all their inner children came out to play with me, right? Mm -hmm. I, I jumped and swam and danced, and see, I didn't know that everyone else didn't play. I, did, I was very unself aware of myself, right? So I, I thought everyone played the way I did. Like, I, you know, I, I danced and laughed and I just sparkled, right? I just love to sparkle. I'm a star. I love to be the center of attention. I just love to play, right? And I just couldn't stop then. I, I, I wanted to be more naked with around people that were being naked with me because there's this like vulnerable reel that comes out when you see the naked body. You don't see um, status. You don't even see height. It, it's this weird thing, right? You just see real. That's real. And you just love, right? So I started going to the naked beach. And I started seeing magic. I, uh, I did rooms there for the first time. With, I call her my goddess of love, Tamara. She lives down the hollow from me. She's a roommate now, right? I met her at the beach. Oh. 
And when I was doing mushrooms, I actually experienced this thing. Everyone around me glowed green, which is the heart chakra color of love. It's actually real. And when they put their clothes back on, I watched their glow go back into the beach and they walked away without their magic. Wow. And I started thinking, you know, I want to bring this because I believe the naked beach is a piece of the Garden of Eden. Right? I really believe it's a connection to that childlike state of the Garden of Eden that they talk about, right? Mm -hmm. When all magic is real. And I decided I wanted to start bringing that magic home with me and back to the city where I lived. So I started by walking barefoot out. I would walk all the way back with my feet on the ground. And I could feel a little magic on me. And then I found out that it was legal to be topless in Canada. And I said, whoa. <laughs> Here comes more oh, magic. <laughs> this is a lot of magic. You mean I can have my tits out wherever I want? So I started like going to other beaches and going topless. But the, the naked beach is my home. I didn't want to go to other beaches. So I started walking up the trail from the top of the naked beach with my shirt off and my tits out. And I would like wear a cape. So that if I heard children coming, I could cover myself because um, I just didn't want to, I just want to be, you know, respectful of people with yep. parents, kids, you know, kids with parents and stuff. And um, so that was always there. I called it my super cape. I just wrapped it around me. And as soon as I walked by, I would just let my tits be free again. And I would ask people because I was really curious because I, I didn't know what was going to happen. I thought that I thought perhaps men would grab my nipples and try to drag me into the forest and rape me. I didn't know. I had yeah. no idea what was going to happen because I'd never done it before. No one else had ever done it. I'd never seen anyone do it alone, walking up a trail, just one woman. And uh, something really strange happened. People saw me for real. Wow. And people said, I respect you. Thank you for doing this. And the only resistance I encountered was from other women, which was totally unexpected for me. Absolutely unexpected, especially the women that were walking with their men, which I totally understand. But I got to tell you, these are granny tits, right? They're not your <laughs> <laughs> men, right? They're I'm unique. Best friend, <laughs> I'm best friend, four children, and they're honestly looking at them probably makes you want to have sex with me less. I got to tell you. <laughs> I've actually had that said to me by my past lover. It was like, I didn't know what to make of all, but you know what? <laughs> I took it personally at the time and cried. <laughs> I, I've, I've lost 100 pounds, right? So I've got some interesting shapes to my body. Yeah, I've got stretch marks that I hid my whole life. Like that was something I was more embarrassed was my stretch marks that I had from 19, right? Wow. And I've uh, lost a lot of weight and I do a lot of running and skipping and jumping and like playing. So I'm, I'm just all muscle. So the only thing, and so then I started asking people on my Facebook, I was like, okay, how, what do you think about this? Do you want to see my tits? Right. So and I, I, like people follow me on Facebook because they really, I just like to say fun things and I want to interact with them. They were like, all the women were like, no, we don't want to see your tits. I was like, okay, cool. But it's your choice. We support your freedom to have your tits out, but we don't want to see them. Yeah. And the men were like, we love tits. Breeze, bring out your tits. <laughs> <laughs> right? And and it, it became a, a real thing where, like, um, men would message me and ask to see more, ask me to send them pictures of more of my body. And I only post pictures of my butt online. And I have this, like, uh, I had this whole thing where I was like the unidentified butts of the naked beach. So there was all my friends, you know, for the naked beach. It was like a thing that I did. <laughs> and uh, so, and they asked me for more. And I say, listen, if you want to see more, you got to be brave enough to be naked with me at the beach. Right. And uh, not a one of them had said yes yet, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that might be the new way of <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for all the new ones to show up. Oh, I see the words. Now I'm allowed to say cock on here. Is that okay to say cock? Or... I don't okay. know. No one has ever used it. Okay. Okay. Penis. Maybe we'll just say penis and we'll use like technical terms so there's no rudeness yeah. to the body part. So I'm going to start using breasts instead of tits and boobs because these are my breasts and I love them and they love me. 
Right. Well, it's part of our bodies, right? And we yeah, shouldn't be ashamed of our bodies. And I think that's body imaging, shaming, shaming the body. We need to stop that because we oh, each have our unique yes. bodies, you know, our unique body parts. You're, and it doesn't really mean that we're going out and saying, look, 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 you know? Yeah. No, saying, I, yeah, I want to be seen and be seen. And you, I, I just like being seen. Yeah. And so I started like going further and further. I started driving home with my tits out, or my breasts out. Look at me being all rude. I, had, I started driving home topless because I didn't. I wanted to bring it to my house because I could really feel the magic when I had my breasts out. And um, like a one, a couple of times, I just walked right into my house with my boobs out. And the neighborhood's got a high flu, but I don't think anyone noticed. Really, no one notices me driving without my bra, my my uh, shirt on. And there's this magical store next to where I go to the beach. And it's called Me Shoes. Okay. And there's a lady there, Diana, and her husband's name is literally Casper. Oh. And she actually turned out to be the daughter of my the woman who owns my building, like all by chance. And she let me go into her store without her my shirt on. One day I was like, I had to put my shirt on to come in here. And she's like, You can have your shirt off in here if you want. And that gave me the courage to go out past where people thought they would see naked people. Wow. Because there's no way I could be doing what I'm doing now right off. Like, I, I couldn't. Like, I, I, it, I just wasn't that brave yet because I didn't. I had to do it in steps, right? I couldn't have done it without the steps. Yeah. And um, I've started moving into my city with my breasts up. Um, I actually pumped my gas topless not long ago at a gas station I go to called The Go. And I did a TikTok and it went crazy. And then people complained and a bunch of people said I shouldn't have my breasts out at pumping gas because I could hurt the children. And they asked, uh, the manager asked me not to have my breasts out on the, on the property. She asked me, she said this was because also men were not allowed. And I said, okay, so I'm not uh, pumping my gas, um, but I'm still doing a lot of driving and I'm allowed to sit in my car with my top off. So that's where I am right now. And it's creating this interesting question because a lot of people are getting mad at me, which is coming from their pain and fear. And then others are just loving me. And um, I, I somehow, all by accident, I've started getting people questioning freedom for their own bodies and their own choices of self and what what is and isn't a freedom. I like the word freedom. Because we don't, we, we don't really truly understand what freedom is, right? No. And it's different for everyone. Yeah. You know, what might not be free for the neighbor or the person down the street, it might be for us. And I think as individuals, we have to actually find out what our healing journey is yeah. so that we can find our freedom, you know? You're and Catherine, your journey has really been transformational and empowering. I'm a woman and I find it empowering because... I feel that we, as you said, the Garden of Eden, before anything happened, we were all in our bare bodies, in our bare. Well, we are we're born that way. We know that's where we come. That's how we start because we're all born naked from our mothers. We can't be born yeah. any other way. It's impossible. Exactly. We don't come out in a big yeah. gown or, <laughs> or a suit, yeah. you know. Yeah, this is how we are born. born. We can see the big times by looking at the small times, our lives, because the big times are the, they're, they're the small times are the same. So we can see how it works by looking at our own lives. We, we started naked. Of course we did. We didn't come out cool. with how silly would that be? And, and we danced as children. We started as children, fully magical creatures in a garden called Eden, right? And we danced and played together. And I remember being there. Because once my mind and my soul started waking up, I started remembering that I was just not not just this body. I I I'd had other bodies. They were further back in my memories. As I went into my own mind, I started remembering my lives. I, I never, I didn't know what I think thought before that, but um, I'm remembering, and I remember our beginning, right? Yeah. I remember. I also remember, and this is going to sound weird, but I remember that Eve wasn't the first woman. I remember she was the second. So who's the first woman? Well, some practice so the, the ancient Jewish faith, faith and books talk about a woman named Lilith. Oh. 
We only have some of the books of the Old Testament in our Bible that we call, that we use for the Christian faith. There's a bunch more books that, that you could use in the Old Testament when you look at the Jew, Jewish faith. And they have some really interesting things in them. Like there's a Kabbalah, like uh, mythology, like they talk about the, the um, our trees of life. They know that the tree of life is our body. Right. And they talk about the different magical parts of our body. So the Jewish faith is intriguing. And some of their books talk about the first woman whose name was Lilith. Wow. And that Adam was born to Lilith, a virgin birth. Wow. There is so many, so many different stories, right? Yes. It's, what do we believe? What do we know? You know, and it's and no one is wrong. Everyone has no. their own faith and their own beliefs. You know, and there's this, no is just, this is just what I remember from me. Yeah. Right. I don't know that. I just know what I remember. Yeah. Right. And that is actually intriguing because every man does come from a woman. And at conception, we are all women. Right. Yeah. Until men get flooded with testosterone, they are female. Right. And then their body changes to an Audi. And, you know, all their different parts are were originally female parts in the DNA coatings. So the fact that, you know, and who knows? And that doesn't mean that the other story is wrong. It just means it's part of it. Because that's exactly. the way they read the Bible, right? Because it's so interesting to just look, right? Well, that's it, right? Look. Let's open the minds. Let's really open the minds and mm -hmm. understand things. And stop being so judgmental when there's something that makes mm -hmm. you uncomfortable. Ask yourself why it makes you uncomfortable. Maybe there's something within you that hasn't healed or something that's within you that you want to do, but you just haven't found the strength to do yet. And, and that's why I wanted to have Catherine on Tea Time mm -hmm. here today is to open up the mind, understand that transformation is different for each and every one of us. And Catherine's story is Catherine's story. It is not Miss Liz's story. It is not the neighbor's story. It is Catherine's story. We each have our own individual stories and our own individual missions in life once we find that purpose and that why then we truly transform through it and that is what Catherine has done with her story is she has truly transformed so if you'd like to know more about Catherine, check out her tiktok i have it here on the bottom <laughs> oh, no, that, that 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 is the best way to, to reach <laughs> Catherine, and she also has instagram and she has facebook and that i will put that up as well and for anybody that's watching the audio later it will be in the description so you can reach out to Catherine and follow her journey and see if it's something that really opens up the mind for you don't be judgmental try and go in with it with an open mind and this is what we're here for today is to open the minds and say okay this makes me a little bit uncomfortable this makes me want to judge first but get to understand before the judging because when I first seen Catherine I was like whoa what's this this is what I'm doing. And then I followed a little more and a little more. And I seen the transformation. And like I said, we talked back in April and she's here in May. And I've seen the transformation in those 30 days of Catherine. Catherine is not the same Catherine I met in April. She has truly transformed in 30 days. And this is what we do is we transform ourselves when we spill and live our true authentic teas. And when I say tea, I don't mean the beverage. I mean ourselves. The past, the present, and the future. And that's exactly what Catherine gave us, was the titties, ecstasy, and action. And her future is action. She is working on a movement, and you are opening doors. I'm questioning our freedoms for self, because I think it's time we'd start talking about freedoms for self again. That's all, you know, and I just, I'm watching the world, and I'm like, we need to start. And uh, it, it's time for us to look at things honestly and truthfully again, because we're lying to ourselves and weirdness, right? And just like, I just don't. I want to wake up the world. It's my mission. I am my one. And what I've been doing is I've been wakening the one in all the other women. I've got women all over the place taking their small steps of freedom. I've got women going out in public without their bras on. They're like, I just, I just, and, or they drive without their shirt on. And they're taking their small freedoms from the inside, right? Because yeah. no one's brave enough to go from walking around with your clothes on to walking around in public with your shirt off. It's like, that's, for most people, that's way beyond what they can do, right? And, and a lot yeah. don't want you. But take your little freedoms. Don't wear that bra one day, you know? Walk in your bare feet on the, on the pavement. Take your shirt off at the beach, right? Yeah. 
Or wear that see-through shirt or that low-cut blouse. Own your beauty. Because you are more than sex. Yeah. You are the female divine. Well, I, I really like that you said that, Catherine, because you said the word sex. Mm. Just because Catherine's walking around without her top does not mean that she's looking for sex. She's what? looking for... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you are. <laughs> but no, I'm not immediately wanting to have sex with you. <laughs> but, have not, <laughs> but your main message is to really be comfortable in your body, to really be yes. expressive. Yes, These, I have mother's breasts on purpose. I was given this body to give you this message on purpose. I am here as a mother. I'm here as a woman. And I am not here to hear trying to flash my breasts to you because I want to show off because they're nothing to show off. They're just beautiful grandmother breasts, right? Yeah. Well, not one yet, but I'm hoping to be one day. Um, yeah. And we've, we've got to the point where breasts are now sexual. Yeah. And this is what I think about the female form. I think the entire female form is sexually beautiful. The curvature of your neck, the, the taste of your skin, right? The shape of your foot. Those are all sensual things, but we make them sexual. Yeah. And I think that once we get to see something, then we got to start seeing the real person on the inside, right? And um, I need to thank you for letting me talk like this. I've never been able to just talk. I'm so excited. Oh, thank you. And I think that because we don't feed our babies with our breasts anymore, because we had to go back as to, we had to go to work as women because there wasn't enough money with just our men working anymore after the war. We all had to go to work. And we could only do that until we had the bottle and we could feed our babies with not breast milk. So most of, a lot of this generation, this generation, our generation was not fed by breast. Because the mothers couldn't, right? Yeah. And even when we do, it's only for the first six months. So because we didn't have to, we didn't have them in their in our mouths. We didn't feed from them as babies. We don't have an experience with the mother's breast. We just see them as sex, men and women. Well, I, I think that's programmed into us as well, right? Absolutely. Society, Absolutely. society has told us this. This is this is the new way of doing it. You will feed by a bottle. You know, I'm grateful because the my garden of evil. That's when we were programmed with that, right? Yeah. We ate from that apple and ba boom, we got the knowledge of the good and evils, a list of rules. And one of them was you got to wear your clothes. And we, oh, there's our programming that we put on our leaves, right? We covered ourselves. That's what they said. So, yeah, of course, programming systems, you're right? They're yeah. in us. They are in us. It's, you know, society is us. And these are our automatic functions. That's how you break out of your rule and wake in your mind. You but what's the first thing a woman does when they get home, when they have a bra on? They, bra. they take it awesome. off or they unclip it. They're like, oh, let them go. Freedom, <laughs> right? That's a free feeling to kindly finally be able to have your tits out and you don't have to, wow, you can breathe. Your yeah. back doesn't hurt and you can move your shoulder. And oh, yeah, I don't own bras. Yeah. I, I, my, when I lost weight, I, I gave up trying to find the sizes and, and then they got so small, I didn't have to wear one anymore. So I just don't have one, right? Yeah. I walk everywhere. No bra. Never. Unless, you know, unless I'm going to church and I'm wearing a, a white shirt, but I can't ever see that happening. Um, I, I'll wear a tank top under so that, you know, I'm not as floofy and floppy in certain places. <laughs> 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 well, I really, I really enjoyed like your the openness, Catherine. Because when I first mm -hmm. seen your story too, like I just said a few minutes ago, I was like, "What? What is she doing? What? what is, what's the goal here? Like, yeah. what? You know?" And I think that's where a lot of women are coming from. Is what is the mission? What is the goal that Catherine's looking for? You know, like what message are you trying to give? Are you trying to say that it is okay to respect our bodies, but also show our bodies? Like, what is the message that you want to give? Catherine? Well, there's this interesting thing that I've been experiencing. Let me get some water. There's been this interesting thing that's been happening where men feel that because they already have the right to show their chest, yeah. that their equal right to me having my breast out is them having their pants on. And I'm like, no, sweetheart. I'm just asking for the same right you already have. I would like to be able to freely have my breasts out from my choice. 
I think it's a divine, it, it's, it's a, our society needs to define where the line of our freedom of choice is because we all got asked to make, all of us just got asked to make the hugest choice yeah. for our bodies. We all did. Every single one of us on earth just got asked to make a choice. And we all asked ourselves, where are our lines of self love and where are our lines of loving the other humans and some of us ran right out to get it make that choice right off the bat yeah right others had to think about it a bit more and then people like me that got damaged by those companies we took a little longer to decide i just got mine just before they dropped the the passes that we had to have here to go out in public right but we all got asked that question big time. Yeah. And I think of a, a lot of us are thinking, whoa, I don't like how that got answered by this. I don't, you know, I don't know. We don't know. We yeah. don't know because we don't know the future. We don't, everyone acted like they knew what the future held. But it's not written yet. We exist in a, a permanent moment of now. There's no way to foresee the future other than to look at the path and go, this is where this path led before. It's probably going to lead there again. That's how paths work. <laughs> What's well, a repeat of the past, right? Exactly. Because that's how time works. We keep repeating because there's the big lives, there's the small lives, and we all lead small lives in, in the big times, right? From mm -hmm. the beginning of the times to here, that's a big time, right? And we're always going to repeat the past until the past gets healed. You know? Well, yes, and as humans, that's how we evolve because it's not just each of us waking up and becoming enlightened. It's yeah. all of us because we are all, right? We're all being woken up on some really massive scales right now. That was a big question for each one of us to yeah. ask ourselves, where is our line of self and where is our line of others? And where does safety go and how safe do we have to be? How safe is safe and, and when does, you know, being too safe happen? Well, and I like that you said that everyone, because it's true, everyone around the world had mm. to be asked that question, you know, and what Catherine's talking about right now is the vaccine, you know, do we get it? Do we not get it? You know, there are some people that went out right away we and got it, it and, and then <laughs> some waited, right? Yeah. And we question, especially people who have gone through side effects from medication in the past, they question, is this safe for me? Is this good for me? You know? Yeah. Yeah. And and that's exactly what you're doing with your breasts, with the movement yeah. of your breasts, is that mm -hmm. you are asking, is this safe for me? Is this good for me? Yes, as a woman, is this yeah. safe for me? Because I already made my decision. I got my vaccination. Um, but I want to know if I can do this safely. And I want women, because we know it's a right here in Canada, but no yeah. one uses it. No one does. And why is that? And why? And I asked women. I went out and I asked my sisters who are nudists. I said, will you come do this with me? They're like, no, I don't want to experience what men will say to me when that happens. Now, that's because these women have really beautiful breasts. And these, these two women I asked were actually a pole dance. One is a pole dance instructor and one is, was, used to be a stripper. So they've experienced some really nasty things from men when they have their breasts now. Yeah. So I wanted to find out first if it was safe. Is this safe for me to go out in public with my breasts out? So I did it in really small steps because we need to figure out if things are safe first before we do them. Otherwise, it's not safe. Right? So with this movement, Catherine, where do you want to see it go? Do you want to see it go outside of Canada worldwide? Like, where do you want to see this go? Well, here's the thing. I am just open to the magic of the universe. This is what's happening. Right? Women are starting to take their first steps towards their own personal freedom of self. They're, they're contacting me from all over. I want that to spread. I would love for that to spread. Like, that's my magic. I, I want other women to find their own freedom because it makes me so happy as I inspire them and they inspire me and we get inspired together. To me, that's magic, right? That's the inner magic. And then I want um, men to question that, you know, how they look at the breast, because I think the more men, breasts that men see, because right now they just get perfect breasts, right? They don't see the grand yeah. or the, and I think it's good for, for, for men to look at rights of women, because we've had a lot of arguing between the sexes up until now, a lot of yelling and a lot of yeah. mad, 
women saying, I want my rights now. And the men going, okay, but we can't make it happen right away. Like, we can't change everything. We love you. We want you to be the same as us. But we can't change everything right now. That's not how it works, right? And so it was just a clashing. Boom, boom, boom. Headbutting. It's been like that for a while. It had to be that way at first. That's how it worked. Yeah. You have to fight it about it at first to find your, your middle ground. Like, it's great that we didn't go to war because that would have sucked for the world. <laughs> <laughs> But that might be that might be the next war that's coming, you know, is the battle of the sexes, you know, well, who's going, I, who's going to win. But it's not it shouldn't be a war. It should well, be an I understanding. Don't be. I don't think it has to be war because I see that on this path right now. I do see that world war is possible. I mean, but we all do. We all see that there's some weird fuckings in the future. Right. There's just some weird stuff coming. We're not sure what it is. But I'm hoping. That. um. By getting everyone to question their own freedoms a second time, because we all did it once. Yeah. And we were forced, a lot of us felt forced into that. It wasn't nice. There was a lot of forcing there. And nobody likes to be forced into making a decision that they're not ready to make yet. And that's what happened to a lot of people, right? They just weren't ready. And some people never would want to, and I don't blame them. That's okay. That's their choice. And if you ran out right away and got a cup, unless you, how brave are you? I'd be like, wow, you guys are brave. Good job. Right? And um, I want to stop this ugly future that so many of us are seeing. I want to awaken the love codes in the matrix. Because I've been, you know, when I owned my own loves, when I loved myself fully, you know, as a, as a, as a mother and a, da a daughter, I loved myself with all the loves. In my mind, I went up to a control room. And I've talked to other people that have experienced this. I'm not alone on this. I went up to a control room and I expected to be a bunch of people or things on the controls. And, you know, the universe was running at some sort of massive level. I got up there and everything was on autopilot. I couldn't understand what that meant. But, see, I have this really naughty child inside. And I wanted to see what would happen if I turned it on. So I did. And then I turned it off. Because I was like, whoa, what's if, what if this is the whole control room for everyone? And I just <laughs> messed with them all. Like, what's going on here? And I just started thinking. And, and um, I put the way, the safe word of Catherine and love in there because I was, you know, what if someone else got up there, owned all their loves and got up there and messed with the controls of the matrix or whatever. And uh, then later I, I went back up and I turned my own control room on because that's what it is. It's my control room, Catherine. And right after I did that, my magic powers all turned off. No one wanted to be around me. I was rejected by all my friends and family and I had to play alone for about six months. Because no one could even stand the smell of me. It was... It was <laughs> 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 right before that, everyone wanted to be around me. I victimized myself with like, God, will you guys get away? You're always going to be near me. Go away, right? But that was, you know. So I turned off my own automatic functions. That was myself. That was my control. I like I liked that you said that that, that was your control. Yeah, because we yes. are the controllers of who yes. we are. We are our own one, right? We yeah. are our own gods. I had this intriguing thing happen to me. I was watching a video of a microorganism, something we can't even see. And it was called a water bin. And it was glowing, like the colors of magic green and blue. And you could see it's hard and stuff. And we were all, 22,000 of us, we were watching this microscopic creature and loving it. And I watched the colors in this creature change and become more and more magic. And I could feel this creature. And I felt them love me back. And that got my mind thinking. Because our entire bodies are filled with microorganisms. And they actually can make us crave sugar if our gut's unbalanced. There's a lot of things, that, you know, they can kill us if the wrong ones get in. Yeah. And I've decided to start talking to my microorganisms because I'm their god. I'm just too big for them to see, and they're too small for me to see. 
So I just started this experiment in myself today, loving the microorganisms that live in me and on me. Mm -hmm. um, from that video that I saw, and I'm going to see what sort of interesting happens from that. I love that word, interesting. Well, yes, because it's intriguing because nothing could happen, and that'll be cool. Because yeah. I had a fun time loving the microorganisms on my mind. <laughs> Or, or I could heal myself because these microorganisms, these control the inflammation in your body. They can control your gut biome. Like these microorganisms actually run my body. Other than me that makes my heart beat and my brain function, that's me and my magic. But those microorganisms, they kind of run the rest of Catherine. Yeah. And I love the word interesting. You should have gave me that word as your one word, but you gave me the oh, word transformation. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's intriguing, even better, because intriguing is when it's really interesting, right? Yeah. When something is really interesting, it's intriguing, and your mind just can't leave it alone because you just want to understand it. You want to get inside and roll around in it, right? Yeah. That's intriguing. I yeah, find it so much is. Intriguing. Because, you know, I want to know, is this legal? Because the police have been showing an interest in me in the last couple of days, right? Yeah, I've noticed them like checking me out and I want, so I'm, I'm, I made a video and I asked them, I said, police out there, I would like to know, is this something you're going to arrest me for? Because I don't know. Because I've heard of other women getting arrested. I have a, a transgender friend who is a transgender female who has breasts. Um, and she had hers out before she had changed her sex legally. And she was approached by a police officer and told to put them away. Wow. And if she had said no, what happens next? Because when I was told that I had to put my breasts away at the go, I said, well, what happens if I decide I don't want to? And she said, we'll call the police. So what does happen? I'd rather know before it does. I don't want that to happen. That doesn't yeah. sound like fun. But you did say it was legal in Canada. So what would you be arrested well, for if it was legal? Well, here's the thing. It's, it's in the criminal code that anywhere that a woman is allowed to have their shirt off, every, anywhere a man is allowed to have their shirt off, I am legally allowed. But it's becoming gray. Um, if you look at some parts of our Canada government website, it says it's not legal to be topless on our beaches. So there's mixed messages again. Well, yes, because I think what happens is this. When we don't use our rights, they tend to disappear. Because a lot of what started this was for me was, was I uh, was working at a cleaner and they were treating really bad and they were yelling at me a lot. And then they took away our breaks. And I thought they were in the labor code. And I quit and I made a TikTok. But I, I was all love, right? And um, when I looked at the labor codes, they had actually removed those two 15-minute breaks. I had no idea they were gone. When I used to work 15 years ago before I got sick, because I just started working again, because, and I'm trying, but it's weird. It's it's a weird place yeah. to work. And um, I found out that those 15 minutes break, those two 15 minute breaks that we all think we have in our labor code, they're not there anymore. They're gone. We yeah. only are entitled to a 30 minute unpaid break. So the lower paid companies are, st you know, the the companies that are built on the backs of our poor are starting to take away those 15 minute breaks because they don't have to give them. Wow. So uh, that's the way that I'm thinking about this because that's what I see happening because no one's using this right. Mm -mm. Because it's a lot of scary to use and it's a lot of people staring at you and a lot of exposed. When having your tits out front, you just feel exposed. It's vulnerable, right? Yeah. And I want my daughter who's 20 and she comes to the beach with me. I want her to have the right to do this when she is my age, if she wants to. And I want her to have that freedom. So I want to ask this question now, and I think it's a good question for us to ask ourselves. Because we got asked a certain question. We got asked, if the fate of the world depends on your sacrifice, will you give us your body? Right? That's what that question was. And we're like, yes, world, we love you. Most of us went right out and saved the world. We were all the saviors of the world, right? Mm -hmm. And I think this is an interesting question because this isn't about being hurting the world. This is about making the world uncomfortable. 
And this is about making people think. And this is um, an interesting question to ask after being asked that last question. And I think it's time we start talking about freedoms again. And, and stop thinking that when you get offended that you're actually hurt. Because this is what I'm experiencing all around me. Everyone is getting offended by my breasts. Right? Friends and my freedom. You're like, I'm so offended. You have your breasts in. I'd rather not see them. They make me uncomfortable. I support your claws. But you can't have them out around me. And I think it's a wondrous question. Because I'll tell you what. I'm not in this to show my breast to everyone, right? If the law says to me, Catherine, you can't have your breast out, I'll go back to my naked beach and play gracefully in the Garden of Eden for the rest of my life. I will dance naked with my naked brothers and sisters, and we will play together as children on the beach, and I'll be happy. I don't, I don't have to do this. I'm doing this because I'm curious, and I want to know, and it's intriguing to me. And I want to waken the freedoms of other women. Because I think we've been victimizing ourselves a little lately, right? Women were victimized. We did need to not answer that question. We did not have to fight our way out from underneath that rod, right? Because we weren't being treated well. But now we're kind of victimizing ourselves a little bit, right? Yeah. Limiting ourselves. Like, why don't we want to have our breasts out? That's not, we're not being told that. We actually have this freedom. Um, you know, and, and and I think society in a whole has been victimizing itself a little. Yeah. And that's a state of consciousness. When you start realizing that you are being victimized and that you can stop this victimization because you're doing it to yourself, then we wake up. I want to thank you, Catherine, for sharing that today and sharing all those important facts. You know, if you'd like to know more on the movement of Catherine, check her out on TikTok, her incredible, incredible transformational movement. And she does ask the good questions and she does ask for feedback and how you feel about it. And, you know, and what would you do and all of that? So she has that open conversation with you. Don't feel to judge Get to understand first. And if it's something not for you, she's okay with that. She's well, not listen, saying you I have love to it. love it. I love being judged. I love it. And I love when people ask me why. And I love when people get mad at me. So it's okay. Listen, I just want you to contact me. If this interests you, I want to hear your perspective because I want to know. I want to understand why you're mad at me. I want to know why you love me. I want to see what freedom you're doing. So this this isn't about, right? And we all judge, right? We, we keep saying that, no judgment. We all judge, right? We judge things like, you know, should I wear shoes with, or sandals today? Like, we're all judging in some way. Yeah. I think it's just, let's be respectful. Exactly. I would love to be treated with respect. You can judge me all you want. You really can because I'm worthy of being judged, right? Well, when you're your true self, right? The yeah. judgment doesn't matter because we know yeah. who we are as individuals. Yeah. This is the one thing I learned from Trump, right? I, I was so depressed when that man got elected. I thought the world was going to end. Uh -huh. But I learned the most valuable lesson from that man, right? He owned his actions. So no one could judge him. Right. And that is a beautiful lesson in love that I took from that man that I, you know, that I despised. I thought he was a dickhead. Right. <sighs> but he spoke that truth to my and awakened my mind. And I don't follow any politics now. I think they're all crap. <laughs> I, I think they're all crap. So um, but that was how I felt at the time. And uh, no one can judge me, my sister. They can try. Yeah. But I own all of me including my breast. Yeah. And so you can try to judge me if you want, but you'll end up judging yourself because that's all you're bringing forth, right? When you judge me, you are judging self because you put your face on me because you don't know me yet. Exactly. I want to thank you. Is that okay? Sure. I don't think I, I couldn't have done this without you. This was my first podcast interview. Like this was my first anything. This you broke, you popped my cherries, right? 
And I in was a good way. <laughs> being so gentle with my cherry <laughs> and, and making me feel so loved because, sister, you are powerful. And you are shining the light on those of us that need light shine. I've been waiting for you for a while, honey. And you share my middle name. My name is Catherine Elizabeth. This is Elizabeth magic that we're playing in here. The Beth, the soft Beth, right? Beths are always soft. And Liz's are a little tougher, but also soft, right? And I want to thank you for everyone else that you're doing this for. Because you have awakened my magic and power. And I can feel my power rising with you. And I see my future coming and it's bright. And it's you've given me my first step up. That's all I'm here for. I gotta thank you for that, sister, because I never had a sister. And I didn't really under, understand women before because they were a lot of confusing and emotions. But I feel, I feel that sister love from you that I never had growing up. And it's a rare feeling for me. Ah, there's your love. I can feel you right there, sister. God, you're powerful. You're a powerful being. Thank you for shining light. Thank you for using your light to shine on. Thank you. It comes from my heart. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Catherine. And thank you for giving me that opportunity to share your story and to open that door and to pop your cherry. <laughs> I'm not a cherry lover, but if, 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 it, if it makes a difference, that's what I'm here for. Because that's all I do is I spill the tea. I open the door for everyone to spill tea with me. Good news. Good faith, you, good growth. What do you do? You think of a fresh cherry that just come off the tree. Right? And that cherry is magic because that's red. That's our base magic. And you're biting into it for the very first time and tasting a real fresh cherry off the tree. And that's what you're doing for me. You are my cherry, not my apple. Thank you. Um, eating from the cherry, which is open. Because you're opening my mind even more, sister. You're sparking all these sparks. Well, thank you so much. And thank you so much for joining me on Tea Time today and sharing your story with my viewers and listeners yeah. out there. Thank and you. I really want to thank you for taking that time for me because without my guest, I have no tea to spill. I think we're going to have to continue this on TikTok Live soon because I think that's where this is going to go. I, I think we're going to do more talking about the freedoms and rights. And you and I are going to spread a light together, sister. I think that's what's going to happen. Because I think I think this is this is such a huge topic. And I love talking with you. Because you, you understand me and I understand you. Absolutely. Yeah. And on that note, I want to thank all my viewers and listeners who have tuned in. If you are watching a replay please push hashtag replay and tell me where you're tuning in because i always love to hear where you're tuning in from or what podcast station you actually found me or heard me on because then it actually helps me to open the doors on those stations a little bit more because then i can get a little deeper and i can bring some stronger teas to the table personal growth stories actually inspire me because i have had my own transformation through powerful growth and uh, grows and I really want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in and listening to each of my shows. I'm going to close up May with an incredible guest, Bruce Solemn, who has had UFO sightings, who will be talking about ghosts, angels, all of the spiritual stuff, the real deep. We're going to close May up really spiritual and really strong. So I want you to tune in May 25th for that tea time at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we will close up May. June's guest will be revealed on the 22nd, not the 20th of this month, because I do have some delays with a couple of the guests with a couple requirements. Uh, they have been ill due to COVID. So I am pushing it an extra two days for the release date. So stay tuned for June 22nd for the release of all of the June guests. And you will be truly inspired by who is coming to the table and what topics I will bring to the table. I do bring tough, hard topics to the table. So there are trigger warnings. There are topics that might emotionally 
bring risk to you. So please tune into my show only if you feel that you are able to watch my shows without being triggered because I do not want to traumatize anyone out there. If my show is traumatizing, please let me know and I will put a stronger disclaimer out there for each and every one of you because my got my job here is not to offend anyone. My job is to make a difference and to spill tea. And when I say tea, I mean teaching educational awareness that we all can make a difference one cup of tea at a time. So thank you for tuning in to Tea Time with me today. And thank you, Catherine, for joining me. And I will see everyone May 25th with a new guest and a new cup of tea to spill and find out what Bruce's TEA is. <laughs> thanks for letting me tell my story today, sister. Thank you for that gift. And thanks for mm-hmm. listening Thanks for hearing it. I can't wait to hear back from everyone who's watching this and watched. I'm so excited. I can't wait to connect with you all. Thank you. Well, thank you.